So I'm done the sun tracking for this solar th thermal car test model. Uh, it uses a long garage door chain and a sprocket. So I'm going to show now how it rotates and rotates the uh, mirror so it's focused into the sun. So this curve adds um, quite a bit of the tension um, to keep the chain onto the sprocket, but there's still a problem that there's some variations in the curve and you don't always get the uh, right amount of tension. So what I have for small variations in tension is I have this tension spring. So this is always pulling on the um, chain and you can see here it has this kind of snap to it. Now that keeps um, a certain amount of tension in the chain all the time and as it rotates the curve um, keeps the uh, larger amounts of tension and that works very well. Now the biggest thing actually that helped this design out um, over the first design is that this sprocket is a lot thicker. The other um, sprockets from bicycles are just really thin sheet metal and this is a lot thicker. This chain here from a garage door is a lot thicker um, so you need a thicker sprocket otherwise it walks it goes off on an angle. Um, but what I really want is there's a drive sprocket for garage door that's 8 teeth and this is 18. So that'll be at less than half the speed. Uh, right now, the whole thing rotates in about nine seconds, and it's just too fast to uh, focus properly in the sun with the right amount of accuracy. All right, so now I've switched my idea here. To get more torque out of the motor, I put it at the bottom, and I'm using a larger radius. So the chain's gonna go all the way around and attach the farthest point, um, not closer where I had the other one. Um, right now, what I'm doing is I'm gonna screw in these support arms, these are uh, one by twos, and they come by the motor to create the curve. Yeah, it should work really well. So I'll have another support arm here, and they'll have a track that connects them that'll keep the chain at the same distance from the, uh, from the sprocket. So the track is almost ready for testing, but here it's really good to see um, how well it works. You can see how it's exactly in the center of the track as you rotate. The distance stays about the same all the way through. Works very well. And with this I can go all the way to the very um, steep angles. You can see the clearance there. A little bit of clearance to the support. So if there was a chain on there, it would work perfectly. Now for the really high angles, right at the end here, I need a piece to hold that chain a little further away so it doesn't pull it um, down too much. I just picked up six sprockets, um, all different sizes, from a local bike shop here. These are just bicycle sprockets, but I've been looking for this type of sprocket for a long time. Um, a lot of times with the bikes, they come all together um, for shifting gears. So this I can just mount to any piece of plywood, drill a hole, and use it with a motor. Um, so I'm going to use some of the smaller ones for the sun tracking drive. I'm going to use a bike chain um, to rotate the mirror. So I'm really happy about these. I'm sure I'll find lots of applications where I can use a chain. Um, using a chain is a lot better than a gear when you're just um, sizing it and using wood um, because your tolerances can be very bad and it'll still run properly. I mean, you can have it um, go back and forth and the center can be off um, and it won't affect, uh, the gears won't bind or jam together. So I'm excited to be able to use these. So I'm starting to build a drive um, for the sun tracking. So this is what causes the um, mirror to rotate and focus the light on the pipe. So I'm just working on the drive at this point. I've worked out I probably want like a two foot diameter circle here where I'm going to have a chain that goes along a track to keep its tension. And then I'm going to have um, a worm gear drive motor here with a sprocket and that's going to rotate. And the chain and sprocket are from uh, bicycles that I got. Now this is the, um, the motor I'm going to use. It's a windshield wiper motor out of a car. Um, it's a high powered motor and it has a, a worm gear. So it's a very low speed and it's also non back drivable. So um, when the computer adjusts the mirror, it's going to stay fixed there. Um, you, can't, you can't spin this when it's not on. Um, the only thing you can do is turn it on and it spins on its own. You can't back drive it. So most motors, if you put enough load on them, they'll go back. This locks, which is good. Now, just to demonstrate the speed control here, if I go on number one, 
it takes about four seconds to do a complete rotation. Now number two, it's about three seconds. Number three is even faster. And you can hear it, it's getting a lot more power. And number four, faster again. Okay, so for this track, for the sun tracking um, drive, I'm going to have a chain that's on this circle, or half circle, and this is going to keep the tension in the chain. So I want it to be perfectly cir uh, circular from this point. And this hole is where the, um, the shaft of the motor is going to go through. And there's going to be a sprocket here, and then the chain is going to lie along this curve. So in order to get this um, the right circle, what I do is I just put my um, pencil through the hole for the shaft. So this is where um, it's going to connect, and then I can just rotate and um, draw as it turns. So this is going to give me the correct circle. There's the motor. This fits on top. And then the sprocket fits on the shaft. So that'll be pulled down with a nut. And then that's what it's going to look like. And this is going to be mounted to the support here. Support arm is going to be here and it's going to be hanging out. And here's where the chain is going to come along and rotate the mirror. I just put some load on this with my fingers and it'll slow down a little bit. But it still has a lot of torque. And then when I stop it, when I turn it off, now it's fixed. This is a great thing about the worm gear. It's locked in there. I can't spin this at all. So that's going to lock it in position um, once it um, aims directly at the sun. So I'm taking this uh, 1 8 plywood piece and I'm forming the track. So I'm going to screw into every um, block that I have. Just put all the screws in and line that up. So it forms a really nice uh, track for the chain to go against. So I bolted the chain guide on there with the six screws and this is exactly what I wanted. I just um, tried this. I just screwed this on just as a demo. So I'm just trying to show that it's the same distance away from this curve as it rotates. Um, see it's just about the same all the way around. So the motor is running pretty rough and here I see the problem because the sprocket is on such an angle because it's tilted back like that it actually when it hits the next link it actually hits the side and it jams it so the drive is working quite well I just made this got the sprocket a little straighter um, so it would uh, drive a little bit better but yeah it's at a high angle I thought this was really cool it's just like it's right in the center of the track all the way around it goes around the turn and then when the sprocket comes out it lifts off the track then hits a sprocket right here comes in through here and then it comes up and touching the side so actually this anchor point had to be a little bit higher it's pretty much straight to the anchor point right now and it's pretty much at the highest uh, angle unless I raise that. So what I do is I just switch the wires. Uh, it's a little difficult. A super primitive um, direction changing method here. And then I just give it some level four. It comes all the way around. And that, see that's a pretty good angle. It's up pretty high. So it came all the way around um, it's still not perfectly straight, so um, the sprocket, the teeth still hit um, some of the sides. They don't go into the center. So this side is um, pretty slack, and this side is very tight. It's like rock hard. That's because this is taking all the weight now to keep this at this angle. Because there's a counterweight, there's more weight now on this side that wants it to uh, straighten itself. But yeah, I think that's pretty good. I would like a better ratio so it has a little more torque, but this is pretty much uh, good enough for testing. For the full size solar car, I'm going to need maybe a stronger motor, or maybe I can go with the same motor, but I need to go, instead of go two feet in, I'll have to go um, a two feet diameter circle, I'll have to go all the way out to four feet, 
So I'll be going from there, and that'll double um, my torque. And also, it'd be good if I could use a smaller sprocket as well. Um, to keep the tension. So instead of without the circle, the chain would go from this point, and it would go straight to the motor. So it'd be a lot shorter, and then there'd be so little tension here. There's still quite a bit of tension on the wheel. It's keeping the same length. So if it went straight to the motor, it would just drop off the bottom. It would lose the tension and it wouldn't uh, remain on the sprocket. So for actual sun tracking, um, the adjustments are very small. As the sun moves from east to west, it just changes slightly because you want the shadow to fall in the center. So when one of the sensors becomes um, sees the sun, it just turns the motor on just for a second like that. Just makes a very small adjustment. And then again, like that. Like that. So um, I can see that this is a problem. I'm using speed two with resistance and everything. I don't want to turn the speed of the motor down. What I want is I want a ratio that has high torque and very low speed. So if I was looking at the shadow down there, like if you look at that screw, put on for a second, it moves quite a bit. So that's almost the width of the sensor. I want it to be able to turn on and turn off um, with the sensor um, to have finer adjustments. So I do need a larger um, gear ratio.